Hey guys, um, my name is Kenny, and I'm going to talk about the dehydration of alcohols, which is basically the elimination of alcohols um, using an acid catalyst. So this could happen with uh, primary, secondary, and tertiary uh, alcohols. So, um, and the secondary and tertiary alcohol both proceed through an E1 me mechanism, while the primary proceeds through an E2. So let's, let's do an example of a uh, secondary alcohol uh, being dehydrated. Dehydrate, dehydrated. <laughs> now we're going to use a uh, HA as the uh, acid, and just note that um, A is a generic for it's it's a generic representation of an acid. Um, I think in most reactions we use uh, H2SO4 or uh, H3PO4, but uh, any any strong acid will do. And so the first step is going to be the oxygen donating its electrons to the hydrogen. And then this hydrogen uh, acid bond will donate its, its bond to the acid. And we get this as a product. And now the second step, um, all right, keep in mind that this is the fast step. Now the second step um, is where the a uh, water group, since water is a good leaving group, it would basically just fall off by itself. And this is the slow step. Slow. Now we have the uh, secondary cation here and the conjugate base of the acid from before. Now the third step, this conjugate base, so let's start with this. The conjugate base from before would basically just um, come off and um, protonate a beta uh, hydrogen. So this is the alpha carbon. This would be a beta carbon. So it, it could go from uh, either of these, but since they're the same, it doesn't really matter. So let's just do this one. The electrons from the conjugate base come here. Do that, and the carbon hydrogen bond donates the carbon carbon bond, and this releases the positive formal charge. And so we get this propene uh, compound. And so, yeah, this is pretty, pretty basic for um, secondary or tertiary. Uh, let's, look at, let's look at primary. There we go. All right, so this is prime. Oh, yeah, and the, that last mechanism uh, went through an uh, E1 mechanism. And now the primary would go through an E2 mechanism. And so uh, I'll start with, okay, so we have pro propanol. And HA. The first step is the same as before, where the uh, oxygen uh, gives its electrons to the H, and the HA bond goes to the A. And now, um, this is the part where it differs because uh, water can't, yeah, although it's a good living group, it's not good enough where it would allow a uh, primary cation. So, and since, because primary cations are extremely unstable. So what is going to happen is, this beta, or this, um, yeah, this conjugate base basically just comes back and proceeds through steps three of the E2 reaction, or E1 reaction, where it would, um, it would, hide, it would donate an electron to a beta carbon right at step two. So since there's only one beta carbon, alpha, beta, we're going to take this hydrogen and do that. This carbon-hydrogen bond donates electrons to the uh, beta carbon and alpha carbon bond. And then this alpha carbon and oxygen bond uh, electrons go to the oxygen. So it's basically just steps two and three of the E1 mechanism combined. Uh, E2. So you guys don't forget, not a big deal. <coughs> and so basically we have this, and H2O and HA. Now um, this is how uh, we were, or how I was taught. But in theory, um, another since HA is a strong acid, in theory, another um, water molecule could do this this guy's job, taking out their beta hydrogen because um, 
the H3O plus is a lot less acidic than HA, assuming that HA was a strong acid to begin with. And so basically that's the um, E2 mechanism for dehydration of primary alcohols. Now, um, there's such thing as a rearrangement, and rearrangement happens whenever a cation is formed. And basically rearrangement is where um, shifts uh, happen in the molecule. And so um, a rearrangement in a primary doesn't really work because um, there's only two steps and it, it all happens too quickly for a rearrangement to happen. So rearrangement and dehydration of alcohols only occurs from uh, secondary to tertiary reactions. And basically it's just going to be a secondary uh, cation. If it can rearrange to a tertiary cation, then it will. And what I'm, what I'm talking about is, let's say we start out with a molecule like this. Now, as you can see, um, the water group already broke off. So now, instead of the conjugate acid coming back and being a beta hydrogen, we, have, we can have a methide shift. And a methide shift is basically just a methyl group switching. If it were an ethyl group, it would be called ethyl shift, propyl, you know, whatever. Any kind of, any length of R group will work. So we have a methide shift, and basically it just goes like that. <laughs> and it becomes... tertiary carbon, or tertiary carbon cation, which is much more stable, so this is preferred. preferred. So basically, if it can happen, it will happen. Um, now, let's say we have something like this. If a methyl shifted, it would still make a secondary cation, and the uh, uh, molecule would still be the same. So we, have, we can have a hydride shift, and since there's one undrawn hydrogen here, can that just go like that? Hydride shift, bam! tertiary cation generated. So yeah, um, so methide shift, hydride shift, any R group shift basically can happen. Um, watch out for those. They will get you if you forget about it. <laughs> and um, so then the A conjugate base would come back and um, rip off a beta hydrogen. Now keep in mind that um, although I don't know the exact percentages, realize that the uh, alkene that will be formed uh, wants to be the most stable. And since there are three beta carbons here, um, ripping off the hydrogen here would be more stable because then we make this. So keep that in mind too. Think about stability of the final product um, before you pick which beta carbon to rip off. And also think about probability as well. Why probability? Well, let's say that um, Let's say that somehow making this wasn't didn't produce the most stable compound, or it was equally stable as these two hydro these two uh, carbons. I think now when we include probability into this, um, because these two are basically the same, um, it would also it would generate a high amount of this kind of stuff as well. So you have to uh, juggle probability of like since these two are the same, maybe two out of three compared to stability as well. Just keep those in mind when you're doing uh, elimination reactions of alcohols. And uh, thank you.